In this week's tutorial, we're looking at a parallel arrangement, now commonly referred to as a garden style. If this is something that you would like to learn how to create, keep watching today's tutorial. Welcome back to today's video. It's fabulous to be back with another Christmas design. This time I'm going white and silver and I'm going to try and do three designs out of the same flowers so you can see how versatile floral design can be. Now I've mainly got a bunch of supermarket flowers. If you haven't been to the channel before, I teach flower arranging here in the studio and I know how difficult it is for many people to get hold of fresh flowers. Often there's not a good florist near them. Some florists aren't very welcoming and don't encourage beginners to come in and buy flowers from them and many people don't have the budget to buy lots of flowers from a florist shop. So I show you how you can create beautiful designs for the home or for your local church using supermarket flowers. And this week I've got flowers from Tesco. Now Tesco is a UK store. This is a bunch called Antigua. Now I can't, can't quite work out why they would call a bunch of white flowers Antigua, but I'm going with that lovely frosty icy look. And alongside the mixed bunch, I've got some silver twigs. Now these have obviously come from a supermarket. They're from Tesco as well. They're dried branches that have been sprayed silver. So you can use these this year and next year and the year after. So, so sometimes they can be quite expensive to buy, but they can be a good investment if you're doing long-term floral design, or you can get yourself a spray can, pick some twigs, spray them and use them in your floral design. I'm also gonna add to this arrangement some florist material again this is just ordinary twigs it's probably birch and it's been sprayed in white snow you could easily do this yourself but we use quite a lot of this during the christmas period so i've got a big bundle of it in ready to be used and today's arrangement is going to be like a garden style design which i'll talk you through as i start to create the arrangement and as I'm creating the design, I'll talk you through the flowers that are in the bunch. Now, my chosen container for today was this white enamel container. I got a feeling this came with plants in it. This is actually my mother's and I took it off her dresser this morning. I think she had it as a gift with some house plants in it. The only issue with it is there's a hole in the bottom. Now, I didn't want to use floral foam for this arrangement, but I was planning on filling that with water and that's my first problem. I could place some glue over there to waterproof it, but what I'm gonna do instead is use a secondary container on the inside. So that fits nicely on the inside, and that really is an emergency container because I hadn't thought this through before I started filming. So inside here is some chicken wire. It's been scrunched up, leaving the holes big enough to accommodate my stems, but small enough to support them. That's gonna get filled with water and then I can arrange straight into the wire netting. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm using the flowers three times to create three different designs. So I want to keep the stems as long as possible. So my plan for this arrangement is only to cut a tiny bit off the end. But what I'm gonna do first of all is place some greenery at the base to create a little bit of weight, visual weight and actual weight. And they are part of the principles and elements of design. And if you want to learn more about those, then there will be a link in the description box to a downloadable document that I have that teaches you all about the elements and principles of design. Now, this is a little P-Rest. This is a garden foliage, but any bushy type of greenery will do. So Pittosporum, some eucalyptus. Avoid anything that's too flat because that doesn't help support the flowers. And I'm just creating a lot of foliage weight. And by weight, I mean the way it looks. So it looks like there's a lot going on at the bottom. And this garden style that I mentioned at the beginning is really popular at the moment in wedding work. And it's essentially a parallel arrangement, but made in a looser form. So if you're somebody that's been through college and you've learned about parallel arranging, 
then this is a similar version of it. So I've got that beautiful garden pyrus and then I'm adding in some textured conifers and some pines. This one is hemlock. I think that's a bit tall. I'm just going to take that one back out. So anything that's quite bushy and not too thin because we need the weight at the bottom. The weight is going to do two things. It's going to hold our flowers into place and it's going to visually balance off the arrangement. I'm not planning to put anything in to create symmetry or balance or focal points. You've got to think about how things grow in the garden and which way they would naturally grow up from the ground. So you think of this as almost being like grass. And if you've not arranged into wire netting before, you've got to leave your stems that little bit longer to get right down to the bottom of the bucket so it can drink nicely from the water. And I've got some dried hydrangeas, which I've sprayed white. And I'm gonna use these at the base as well. This is going to give me a nice textural link between my container and my flowers and break up a bit of that harsh greenery. You don't have to do this stage. You can use all greenery if you prefer. I had lots of the hydrangeas and I thought the color distribution was going to be really quite nice. So this is a design style that's generally done to run down the center of the table, in front of a top table or in front of the altar. It's not usually done for the center of a table because it's gonna block the view from one side to the other. This one is those birch twigs and we're aiming to have them in parallel placements. So straight up towards the ceiling, varying the heights and making it really Christmassy, icy, like a frosty morning, which is quite ironic because today we've had snow and it's absolutely freezing at the moment. Lots of different heights. We don't want to finish everything at the same position. We need our eye to be able to travel up and down. Oh, and I've just found another white one. And let's pop that in as well. Now, if you're lucky enough to have hydrangeas in your garden, you could use all hydrangeas there at the base. You could use gyp or anything that's gonna give you that really massed heavy look there at the bottom. And now we can move on to our mix bunch. The first flower I'm using is Ami Magus. It's a nice, soft, wispy flower, quite floaty, very, very delicate. And this is going to copy the shape that the twigs have already created. That tall, parallel placement of flowers, not in a set pattern, but just as they would grow in the garden. So if you're thinking about the way they would come up in the garden, they would come up straight. They wouldn't come out in the side position here, like if we were doing a formal arrangement. The flowers need to face upwards and the heads can nod quite gently back and forth. We don't need to face them forward. We're just gonna place them in, in that really natural look. Now, next of all, I have these gorgeous big blooms. That one is slightly damaged, so we'll pull that off. And I've only done a tiny little snip on the bottom because I really don't want to lose the, the length of the stem. And I'm going to do exactly the same style. Now this one has had a bit of an accident en route and he snapped. So I'm going to have to put this one in so he's shorter. But we don't want to waste him. And then the final one, look at the size on that. It's like a saucer or a side plate. We're gonna pop that one in really nicely over onto that opposite side. And you'll notice one of the important factors with this arrangement is the flower head faces the ceiling. It doesn't face forward. If it's growing in the garden, it won't be facing forward. It'll be growing up towards the light. Now this bunch also has one white lily. If you've not used lilies before, you need to remove the pollen because that can be a real issue if you get it on your soft furnishings or your carpets. And what I don't want to do is place this one in the middle. It's not a symmetrical design that has a focal point in the middle. It's like a border that you would look at in a beautiful garden. 
Now we have roses. I'm going to remove a couple of the leaves because they're a bit untidy. Remove any petals if you feel they're too scruffy or there's any damage on them and copy that very natural position of the flowers. As a florist we would learn to do this method in a few different styles. Formal parallel or a vegetative parallel and if we were doing it as a proper vegetative parallel we wouldn't be able to mix the flowers from different seasons and different continents together but if you're just doing a little playful design for at home you can follow whatever rules you want but imagine they're sitting on your windowsill or a church windowsill it would look lovely in a little alcove or on your kitchen island leading up to Christmas. If you're a keen gardener you need to pull off this little side shoot here, place it in some rooting powder and you'll get that to form into a plant by next year and you'll have some free plants for the summer. There is this quite heavy piece of greenery in the mixed bunch but I'm not going to use that in this design but I am going to use the silver branches and this could really be anything from the garden, anything that will dry naturally has got a nice thick stem. I'm going to keep working it all the way around but if you notice everything is straight, parallel, there's no formal placement, no centre line, no symmetry on either side. I'm just making use of all those gorgeous heads all lined up together on the top. With the addition of those nice textural pieces of the hydrangea there in the middle. Now if you like formal flower arranging then this might not be the style for you but this is a great one for beginners. The chicken wire is there to support and hold your flowers into place and it's a much more environmentally friendly option. What I'm also going to do at this stage is I'm going to use these lovely icicles that I bought in one of the home shops just to place in amongst the flowers that lovely Christmas icy feeling. And then the second one I'm going to place a little bit towards the middle because that's going to help create some depth in the arrangement and, and give that three-dimensional feel that I quite often talk about. That's the garden style or parallel style arrangement. This is the first design using the white selection of supermarket flowers. Pop back because there'll be two more videos showing you how you can use these flowers in a different way and if you click the notification button you'll be told every time I upload a new tutorial subscribe to the channel comment in the box below and help other people find us by liking and sharing and I look forward to seeing you for the next tutorial very soon thanks for watching and goodbye for now